see what I'm going to go on Twitter right now and see what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. My Italian fans. Ciao, Bruce. Are you still in Canada? I await you in Italy and remember to come dressed in light. Here is a beautiful sun. Kiss. That is an absolute tweet. Everything is fine, okay? You're a really beautiful lady. Make it a double. So um, I'm, I'm Mr. Green, and this is uh, You're Mr. Green. I am Mr. Green. Yeah, Mr. Box Lightner. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Box Lightner. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, you have done many over the years. You've done many, many great roles, and Thank you've you. been involved in in uh, some of the greatest genre work around Tron, Babylon Five. You know, right uh, there is good. Yeah, right. and westerns. Too. That's right. Scarecrow and Mrs. King. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, genres. That's right. The all that work, you know, as you as you look back on it, uh, you know, how how, is, how does it make you feel to know that you've been part of so many great iconic series and, and movies? Well, now when I look back on it with some objectivity, it's uh, it's overwhelming. But at the time, you don't think of it as that. You're not thinking I'm doing something iconic here. Um, I think by the time we did uh, Tron Legacy, just to be a part of it, I wasn't a big part of it. That was fine. Just to be a part of it. Uh, they could have easily done it without us, you know. I mean, it could have been a whole, a whole new take on Tron or something like that. But I thought um, so. That there, there you start to realize because people start telling you that, you know what I mean? You're an icon, really. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of those genre pieces, as I mentioned, was uh, Babylon Five. And, yes. um, you know, with the way that the, the show ended, and then there was there had been a lot of uh, speculation and talk about a possible follow-up, but uh, John Michael Straczynski, of course, called said no because of uh, some, you know, unfortunate circumstances within mm -hmm. the world of Babylon 5. Yeah. You know, um, you know, well, which, we've lost some. We've yeah. lost several members, and, um, you know, it kind of puts a... That's why, you see, I, I was trying to say in a talk I gave yesterday, my whole the whole idea. I mean, I love the idea that fans would love to see it again, but it could never be again. Lightning doesn't strike twice. Sometimes it does, but very rarely. It was the combination of the people, the events, the time we were in, and the situation. That's what made that show magic. Didn't even realize it when we were making it, but later on when it was seen. And um, and I don't like to burst people's bubbles. I, I know people would love to see more of it, but. We tried and uh, didn't quite have the same impact. That was the 90s, awesome. by the way. We don't have anything like that anymore. Science fiction isn't like that anymore. <laughs> we don't do that kind of television programming anymore. Um, we have, we'd have to put, they would actually have to have, us have zombies and stuff like that in it because they would be absolutely afraid that it's so old fashioned and creaky that we wouldn't, um, we wouldn't relate to a current uh, young audience. And that's all they're obsessed with is young, young, young as opposed to intelligent um, stuff, so, you know. Well, I, I you know, and I, I just... Be young and intelligent, but sometimes, often not in Hollywood. So. Oh, no, for sure. Even the sci-fi channel is not even sci-fi anymore. It's, it's uh, and believe me, I've had to do a couple of, I've done a couple of things for them, and it's mostly ghost chasers and stuff like that. What is that all about? I mean, I, man, they're leaving that. me behind, because I'd rather do, like, good, serious stuff, you know. Yeah, intelligent, fun, intelligent science stuff. fiction. Yeah, and it's we're you know it's zombies, it's vampires. We're running those genres into the ground, and um, but I, I kid you not, if we were to do Babylon Five now, I mean, I don't know if Joe would agree with me, but he probably would, that they would have to have these certain things now that they they'd be too afraid to do the show the way we did it. They would have to have, like I said, a vampire character. You'd have to have a zombie character of some sort. Um, you know, whatever is the current thing that's going on now, we'd have to, and that wouldn't work. It wouldn't be Babylon 5 anymore. So, 
you know. Um, one of your early projects, the first time I actually, to be honest, what I was exposed to, to you as an actor yeah. was uh, is uh, the, the Gambler. Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Kenny, yeah. yeah. What, was it, uh, what was it like working with Kenny and, and working on the Gambler back then? Well, they were great because they were really um, big budgeted. Uh, we did big budgeted westerns. I mean, we went on location. We were on, just on a back lot in a, behind a studio right. at a western set. Uh, we When we went out, we... The first one was in all Arizona, and the second one, we were one end of Arizona to the other, from the desert to the, up in the high mountains. Uh, third one was all done in beautiful, beautiful New Mexico, uh, outside of Santa Fe. Spent a lot of money in those days. That was a big difference. That was the 1980s, and there was money, you know. And um, it was wonderful because Kenny would, Kenny was just, uh, you know, you, you see him. He was a jovial guy. He was. Uh, Loved the whole process. He loved being on the set. He loved being with all the actors. He was very smart to play Kenny Rogers instead of trying to create, because he has his affable character worked so well. And he's a big guy, you know, and uh, we had a lot of action in those things. We, we, it was just a great, great time. I actually say it was my, I think my longest running series, if we were to put them all together. I probably did, um, I don't know how many hours. Uh, I didn't do one of them. I didn't do one of the miniseries because I did a movie with a um, feature film that came at the same time. And I got a part with John Goodman in The Babe. Mm. And um, I was kind of a baseball fan and I wanted to be in that picture. And they said fine. And I came back after that to The Next Gambler and just did a brief cameo in that. But I pretty much played it out. You know, I pretty much right. played that character to that point. But. Um, you know, I was even asked by Western fans, are they ever going to make another gambler? I said, yeah. I'd have the cane, <laughs> Kenny'd be in a wheelchair, and we'd go hobbling down the street together. You got to know when to hold, boom, 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 boom. When, you know, that would be hilarious, don't you think? Oh, yeah. And Kenny could warble it, and I could, um, you know. Well, I think you were doing pretty good right there. No, that was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, of course, uh, you mentioned earlier uh, uh, Tron and Tron Legacy. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you had a part in Tron Legacy. Sure. Um, and then, of course, there is, you know, obviously a rumor after the success of Tron Legacy uh, of a uh, part three. Is have, have you been involved in any talks yet? Have you heard anything? And if so, or if not, if, whatever you can tell us. No, I, I, you know, I really don't. I'm not, I, I can't say for certain. I know it is in the works. That was already on, uh, in the trade papers that they were, looking at a script and everything, but um, no, I can't really give you a definitive because they wouldn't confer with me about it. I'm just an actor, you know. Um. If it does happen and everything, as you said, all those stars and planets align, would you like more Alan or more Tron? I'd be just happy to be whatever they want me to yeah. do. You know, that's, I don't have a choice in that. I was very uh, flattered just to be included in it. Because, right. yeah, like I said, they didn't have to do that. But uh, the wonderful thing about Tron Legacy, it was made by Tron fans. Right. All of them were little boys who grew up watching that, and they got to grow up and make their own Tron movie with hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> you know, I mean, how cool is that? You know, um, really, I think about it. Yeah. I mean, you too can make your own Tron movie. Here's $350 million to do it. <laughs> now go, do it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that's just great. And when I got the call, I was so, I because I saw the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the little spoiler, the little, I don't know how many set, minute theme or whatever, um, clip that they made to show at Comic-Con in San Diego. And that's when it was, the reaction to that little clip that they made greenlit the picture. Really? Yes. Somebody had very, um, very slyly had a, you know, a... <laughs> uh, phone camera in there and they weren't supposed to have that and took the footage and you could see the footage and you heard the fan reaction in Hall H which is like 6,000 people in there and they went crazy. I saw that online myself and we all knew and then I was hoping but um, you know and then I got a call from Sean Bailey and, and Joe Kaczynski, Sean Bailey being the executive producer and they wanted to know if I would be interested and I said <laughs> there wasn't, I barely got the word interested finish. I was already going, yes, <laughs> of course I was. I, I, I mean, I created that role. I created, I, I was right. there with them on, on the whole thing. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful time, you know. Um, so I don't, you know, the, I get complaints, well, you weren't in it enough. Well, the fact that I was in it, period, what is enough? I mean, no, okay, fine. If you, if you want me to be throughout the thing, I was. I was, a, I was Rinsler. 
I was the young Tron character in the flashbacks. I was in it far more, and then in all the uh, special features at the end, we shot forever too. After that, sort of the um, spoiler for the upcoming uh, next movie, if that should happen. Okay. Excellent. And see, Disney places a chip in the back of your neck. <laughs> I've already probably overextended myself, and uh, if you see me with my face down on the table, you'll know that they pulled it. They did. Well, we hope that doesn't happen. Talk too much. <laughs> and I'm down. It's a small world after all. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, right. I'm flipping out here. Anyway, jet lag. Yeah, that's okay. What a wonderful drug. Thank you.